Hello, dear friends, I'm with you. Today's review is dedicated to fashion, which you have been asking me to talk about for quite a long time. At first, I didn't want to do it, because there is already a grudge against him. But since the last time I played it, a lot of time has passed, and the mod has developed a lot, and has been updated many times. So all the available reviews in Russian no longer give a complete picture of it. Well, the mod itself is on one of your favorite themes dragons. It is called Jagan Mounts, to or, more simply, Riding Dragons. That is, dragons that you can ride. By the way, the developer of this mod communicated with the creators of Eisenfy, and they helped him solve some problems with the codes. In short, it looks like these guys are friends with each other. Well, we'll move on to our new dragons. Initially, the idea of the mod was to make the useless Ender Dragon Egg something more valuable than just decorations. And the developer managed it by 10 points out of 10. It became possible to take the dragon out of the egg and tame it. In addition, it became possible to grow a dragon with a certain element if the egg was placed in certain conditions. But one dragon isn't enough for us, is it? We don't want to choose one person. We want all the dragons at once. We need a whole collection of dragons. But even here, the developer did not lose face and did his best. As a result, as many as 14 types of dragons are available to us today. In addition, they are also divided into two sexes, boys and girls, which can be distinguished by color. And yes, dragons can now be bred. But more on that later. And now let's look at all these dragons. I have all the boys on one side and the girls on the other. To understand what gender the dragon is, you need to go to his inventory. Here, in the upper right corner, the floor of the dragon is marked. M is a boy, FM is a girl. The well-known dragon of the edge, aka Ender the dragon. There is no difference in color between boys and girls. But the fire dragons have bright red boys, and the girls are lighter, orange. It's not so easy to distinguish water dragons outwardly, but if you look closely, then there is a slightly different pattern on the neck of girls and boys, as well as on the sides and legs of boys, the pattern is clearer. For girls, it is almost absent. The patterns on the side of the ice dragons of the boys cast a bluish color, while the girls are pure white. The dragons of the ether they are also air dragons. Girls differ in the shape of the pattern on the head and sides. And the girl has two bracelets on each paw. And the boys only have one. Forest dragons at first glance are almost indistinguishable from each other. But in fact, boys have lighter spots on their heads and necks, which girls do not have. But girls have brighter wings and boys just have dark green wings. Dragons of the lower world, they are also Nether dragons or hell dragons. It's quite easy to distinguish boys and girls from them. The scales of girls are darker, and in boys it is bright red. Skeletal dragons or ghost dragons, it's not immediately obvious, but they are easily distinguished by the color of the heart. For girls it is red, and for boys it is blue. And the same applies to desiccant dragons. But in addition to the color of the heart, the desiccant boys themselves are a little darker. But the girls are of this brown-gray color. How the zombie dragons differ from each other, I did not understand. I suggest you solve this riddle, consider zombie dragons, and if you find a difference, be sure to write about it in the comments under the video. But who exactly cannot be confused with anyone, so it's the thunderstorms, or if you prefer, Storm dragons, the girls are light gray with blue spots, and the boys are dark, almost black with white patterns. Charming dragons are very similar to each other, but the boys have bright white glowing patterns on their necks, heads, and tails, which the girls have very dim, barely noticeable. Solar dragons or zenith dragons. Boys and girls differ from each other, apparently, as to opposites the moon and the sun. The boys are so bright, sunny, and the girls are like a moonlit night. And finally, 
the dragons of the earth, they are the dragons of the firmament. Boys are darker, dark brown with a yellow pattern, and girls have a lighter color with an orange pattern. Now that you know how to distinguish dragons, I'll teach you how to get them. In order to get our first pet dragon, we do not need to tear veins, trying to get to the edge and kill the ender dragon. But you still have to go on a trip. Somewhere in the cold mountainous biomes or on the stone beaches, we will now come across the such dragon nests. You will see them in special blocks. Nest blocks that are made of sticks. There are dragon eggs in the middle. This finding is quite rare, and it should be taken seriously. You can get it by clicking the left mouse button. Do not confuse, do not accidentally right-click. Walking around the world, you will find a dragon egg of some of the elements. If the element does not suit you, then at the egg stage, it can still be changed. But this does not apply to hell and ender eggs. These will not change their appearance, at least I did not succeed. To bring out a certain dragon, you need to put an egg in special conditions. Let's say we found an ice dragon egg, but we wanted a fire one. Don't be upset. Put the egg carefully in the fire. Try not to push it out of there, but rather fence it with something, because these eggs tend to crawl away sometimes. When you place the egg in the place you need, right-click on it, these particles will go around it. This means that it has activated and started to grow. That's it, we just have to wait. I must say right away, you will be waiting for a very long time, perhaps several game days. If you did everything right, then first the egg will take on the color of the element in which it is immersed, that is in our case, fire. Then, after some time again, you will hear a characteristic sound and see that the egg is moving slightly. Get ready here, your dragon will hatch soon. Stock up on fish in advance, and the more the better. The hatched dragon will be considered yours only after you feed it. That is, a wild dragon that is not fed will not obey you. But this is not enough yet. Little dragons are terribly nimble. Keeping up with them in survival mode is by no means easy. Keep a stick or bone and a leash ready. With a stick or a bone, you can make the dragon lie down or stand up. Well, with a leash, you know what to do. Now I'm going to tell you what conditions need to be met to get a dragon of one kind or another. With the egg, Everything is clear. Only an ender dragon will hatch out of it under any circumstances. With the infernal dragon, aka the dragon of the lower world, aka the nether dragon, the same story. You will find the eggs of hell dragons in the nests in hell. With a certain degree of probability, skeletal dragon eggs can also be found in hell. As I have already mentioned, to get a fire dragon, you need to put an element dragon egg into the fire. In order not to get confused which of the eggs change and which do not, just remember, the eggs that you found in the ordinary world can be changed. Of those that you find in hell, you can only change the eggs of skeleton dragons. The eggs of hell dragons and edge dragons don't change. Maybe it will change somehow in the future, but on this version it is. Accordingly, to get a dragon of water, you need to shove an egg into the water you will get a forest dragon if you surround it with foliage. To get an ice dragon, surround the egg with snow. To breed a solar dragon, you need to put an egg on the solar panels. You will have a charming dragon if you cover the egg with books. After birth, knowledge will pour out of him. Look at the particles. By the way, when placing an egg in any environment, make sure that there are no other conditions nearby that can affect the hatching of the dragon, for example, leaves or snow. Otherwise, there is a chance that, for example, 
Instead of a charming dragon, you will get a forest one. I consider the bone dragon to be one of the most original. To get it, you need to place the egg in pitch darkness. For example, bury it somewhere at the bottom of a cave. If you throw an explosive potion of strength into a skeleton dragon, and immediately after, that feed it a ton of Tukliashik, then it will turn into such a very beautiful zombie dragon. Well, if lightning strikes your skeleton dragon in a thunderstorm, it will turn into a withering dragon. Isn't it cool? Perhaps the most time-consuming and difficult of the elemental dragons in survival mode will be the breeding of the other dragon, aka the dragon of the air. To do this, you will have to build a structure above the cloud level and wait there for the appearance of a small dragon. If after hatching you do not have time to quickly grab and tame it, it will rise from the edge, spread its wings, wave its tail at you and fly away. If you don't have an elator, then it will be extremely difficult to catch him. By the way, adult untamed dragons can disperse, so don't be surprised if one of your grown-up fugitives suddenly disappears. There were two dragons left the thunderstorm dragon and the firmament dragon. In theory, to get a thunder dragon, you need to stuff the water dragon with the same explosive power potion that the developer showed in his video. The effect is temporary. It passes as soon as the effect of the potion ends. To prolong the effect, you need to feed the dragon with ender crystals. I didn't get this number. I don't know why. I pulled my storm dragons out of the creative to show you. In general, the developer is thinking about how to make storm dragons permanent, and apparently will do it sometime. How to get a dragon in the firmament is also not clear to me yet. Logically, it can be assumed that it is obtained by throwing fire dragon potions of power. Well, again, nothing worked out for me. However, it doesn't matter. Dragons are still very beautiful. But back to our newly hatched dragon. With a small dragon, you can't do anything special yet. We need to wait for him to grow up. He will grow up himself, and as he grows, his amount of life will increase. Any adult dragon has 170 units of life. The exceptions are held dragons. They have 190 and ender dragons. These are the most tenacious. They have as much as 200 units of life. The dragon doesn't have to grow up to its full-size version. It is enough for him to grow up a little, and it will already be possible to put a saddle on him and ride him. To open the dragon inventory, right-click on it in the squat. Speaking of riding dragons, we sit on horseback with the right mouse button, as well as on a horse. To get into the air, press jump. The dragon will jump up and hang in the air. It is controlled simultaneously by the motion keys and the mouse. To make the dragon move, press the forward movement key and set the direction with the mouse cursor. Where you direct the cursor, the dragon will fly there. It doesn't matter if it's left, right, down or up. On a dragon, you can even dive under the water and fly back out. To land, simply direct your fire-breathing friend to the ground. As soon as he touches the ground, he will immediately fold his wings and stand on his feet. We get off the dragon in the same way as we usually get off the horse with the squat button. You can put armor on dragons, and it is possible to make it. Of course, there will be a lot of resources for it, but the dragon is not a hamster. This armor is not crafted in the same way as in the fashion of Asif, from several separate parts, but as a whole. That is, in this regard, it looks like vanilla armor for horses. There are three types of it, iron, gold, and diamond. They all look just great. You can put a chest on the dragon and transport loot in it, which you will collect in your campaigns, but the usefulness of dragons does not end there. Now our dragons are able to carry mobs. Here, that's it, and this ability of theirs brought me simply into indescribable delight. If you like to breed animals as much as I do, 
then you will also appreciate this skill of theirs. It often happens that for some valuable animal, you have to run far away, fighting off all sorts of misfortunes along the way, combing forests, fields and mountains, and then drag the animal on a leash through the entire map. And in the end, she dies before reaching home, because she unsuccessfully fell down the hill. But now we have dragons from the Jagang Mount to Maud, and they will save us. In order to transport mobs on dragons, we will have to craft a body like this. Crafting is simple. You need boards and leather. By the way, the bodywork is available to us in all shades of vanilla wood. The bodies do not stack. You need to drag the animal to the body, just like to a trolley. You can put a resident there, and even another player. To sit down yourself, right-click on the bodywork. Now you need to guide the dragon along the bodywork, and they will climb on his back. You can pick up two car bodies at a time, if you are sitting astride yourself. If you walk and lead the dragon, then you can pick up three car bodies. If you need to remove the bodywork, then order the dragon to lie down. It is better to pull mobs out of the body with a leash, especially since when trying to destroy it under the mob, there is a risk of accidentally hitting your trophy animal. When you pulled out your valuable cargo, you can safely break the bodywork, it will not break. It will fall out as a whole object. Instead of car bodies, you can put flags on the dragon's back, as many as four at a time. And it's fucking awesome. Look, now the back and sides of my dragon are decorated with a coat of arms. What else does the Jagang Mount to Maud give us? Of course, weapons and armor, tools and shields, and of course, all of this is made of dragon scales. But don't be in a hurry to cry. You won't have to kill dragons for scales. It's enough to craft these diamond scissors, and you can shave the dragons. But only adults with small dragons, this number will not work. The dragon's health does not decrease, so you won't even scratch it with scissors. But the scissors from the dragons break quickly, and at a time, you will cut off one scale at a time. And this process is not fast. After cutting off each scale, there is a rollback in a couple of seconds. With whole scissors, you cut scales somewhere in the range of 20 pieces. The weapon of the dragon scale tool is stronger than diamond ones. The strongest of them are those made of hellish and non-hellish scales. Crafting is absolutely similar to vanilla, only scales instead of the main material. It's the same with shields. Shields, by the way, differ from vanilla in shape. All this is beautiful and colorful, but it doesn't make sense to analyze it in detail. You'll figure it out for yourself. When your dragons are fully grown, they can be multiplied, but, again, not all of them. Fire dragons, forest, water, and ice dragons multiply exactly. I couldn't get offspring from the edge dragons, skeleton dragons, zombie dragons, and nether dragons. Experiment with the rest yourself. I'll just tell you how to do it. To breed dragons, you need to bring together a girl dragon and a boy dragon of the same species and feed them fish. The dragons will be covered with hearts, and the girl will lay an egg. Well, you already know how to handle eggs. By the way, I almost forgot to mention, dragons are able to restore their health. But if you need to treat a dragon urgently, then feed it with any kind of meat, fish or rotten meat. At the same time, it does not matter whether the meat is raw or fried. Everything will fit the dragon. Well, now let's move on to the main part. After all, we appreciate dragons not only because they are beautiful and you can ride them, but also for their unreal power. Dragons are primarily formidable weapons. And now we are going to experience with you what dragons from the Dragon Mount to Maud can do. And let's start in order. The most common attack of dragons is fire breath. At the moment, it is used in addition to fire, forest, air, dragons of the firmament, charming and sunny, as well as skeleton dragons. The latter, by the way, spit invisible fire. The Unser dragon also spews flames, but unlike the previous ones, its flames are more powerful. It even differs in color, this is a darker one. And the jet is more powerful. 
The water dragon spits a jet of water that can extinguish fire and turn red-hot lava into solid blocks. In addition, this attack throws enemies back and slows them down. The frosty breath of ice dragons has the same properties. Extinguishes the fire, the lava solidifies from it, the enemies slow down, but in addition, the dragon with its icy breath is able to freeze water like a charm or income. The dragon and desiccant are able to exhale fumes of decay and decomposition, which impose drying effects on enemies. Ender Dragon's breath also imposes drying effects, but stronger of the second level. In addition, his breath can collect bottles to create settling potions. Zombie Dragons spew out pores that poison opponents. The poisonous breath looks like this, like clouds of green smoke. The Storm Dragon roars a jet of water, as well as the Water Dragon, and also summons lightning on the heads of enemies. He summons lightning somehow himself. I couldn't manage this process. There is also a flute tool for controlling dragons. It is crafted like this, from two sticks, and just in case you can have it on hand. It gives us three types of dragon behavior, approach the player, follow in flight, and circle around the player. This thing works somewhat unreliably, that is, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes dragons follow their master without her. It is also not clear whether it should act on all of your dragons or on someone specific. I believe it is still being finalized. So I told you everything I found out about this mod. Surely many of you will start comparing his sizing phi, decide which is better, which is cooler. Personally, it seems to me that there is no point in such comparisons, because both mods are really good, and they do not compete so much as complement each other. The Dragon models from the Jagan Mod 2 mod are perfectly designed, and they have functions that are not available for firefighting dragons, such as, for example, the same transportation of mobs, and additional inventory in the form of a chest. In general, I don't know about you, but I'm absolutely delighted with this fashion. If you are also impressed with this mod, or if you liked my review of it, don't be lazy to put your finger up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet, and see you soon, dear friends. Bye-bye.